I'm fascinated with how much we don't know. And so I try and have, as I said, have friends around me who are extraordinarily interesting and provocative people that know something about the world we live in. And one of my best interviews I ever had on radio was a young man named Michael Schratt. Mike was, uh, he's very interesting uh, in many different ways because we got a lot in common. But uh, his, his knowledge of the aerospace industry that you don't know exists. <laughs> uh, just generally the aerospace industry, but especially the aerospace industry that's out there in black projects that you're not aware of, all of us are not aware of. Uh, Mike has been tracing that stuff down for years. So uh, without further ado, I want to introduce my guest and I hope he's here. Are you with me, Mike? Jordan, I'm with you. Okay, good. Uh, aerospace, which is a big part, very big part of the, uh, what do you call it, the industrial uh, complex, military industrial complex. Uh, tell us something about, first of all, about yourself and your work and, and some of the stuff that you've uncovered that's really of value to us. Jordan, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be on your program. I, I definitely uh, hold you in close regard, Jordan, and I really appreciate your non-holds-barred, um, shoot-from-the-hip vendetta approach here because I agree, I don't have time for uh, basketball either. I think we should get to the hard-hitting issues. Absolutely, Jordan. Well, that's what I've always felt. You know. Right. So uh, let, let me, uh, yeah, let, let me break into a couple things here. Um, absolutely, Jordan. I want to start out right from the bat, and I want to state categorically that we have been lied to, we have been scammed, we've been hoodwinked and hoaxed. Let me repeat that: we've been lied to, scammed hoodwinked and hoax. Now, what do I mean by that, Jordan? What do I mean? Well, let me bring you to New York Times, February 28th, 1960. That's New York Times, February 28th, 1960. Subheading is Air Force Order on Saucer Sighted. And they have a quote here by uh, Admiral Roskin, Roscoe Hillencoder. People in this field of research will recall that uh, Mr. Hillencoder was the alleged member of MJ-12. Now, here's what he said, quote, Behind the scenes, high-ranking Air Force officers are soberly concerned about the UFOs. Now, we've heard for decades that Air Force has no interest in UFOs. There's no threat to national security. He goes on, quote, But through official secrecy and ridicule, many citizens are led to believe the unknown flying objects are nonsense. The retired admiral said he charged that to hide the facts, the Air Force has silenced its personnel through the issuance of a regulation. So, Jordan, we can make the state clearly here with authority that if there's no threat to national security, why would the admiral be commanding his uh, subordinates to issue a, a law ridiculing people who've seen these? So already the giggle factor was in place. Oh, you got that right. And people are finally beginning to suspect that that's probably the case because there's been too many, too much smoke not to be a fire. Too many good people, too many top military people, police departments, and too many good people around the world reporting what they actually see, and and then being ridiculed for it by the government. So we know the government has never uh, told us the truth about anything, period. So why should they not lie about this? So, yeah, there's a lot going on, Michael, that we've never been told. Yeah, that's more. right. That's right. That's right. Now, also, Jordan, I want to uh, spend just a little bit of time here, and I want to go back and trace the historical legacy of anti-gravity research within the military-industrial complex, because that's the Rosetta Stone to the form, fit, and function of what we see UFOs doing today, 40 years ago. Well, you so, got that um, right. That's exactly yeah, I wanna, right. I want to. I want to give my sources here. Amarillo Daily News, November 26, 1955. So it's November 26, 1955. Here's what they said: "Quote: Aircraft industry, industry firms now participating or actively interested in gravity include." The Glen L. Martin Company of Baltimore, Convair of San Diego, Bell Aircraft of Buffalo, New York, 
Sikorsky Division of United Aircraft, Lear Incorporated of Santa Monica, Clark Electronics of Palm Springs, and Sperry Gyroscope of Great Neck, Long Island. So, Jordan, by 1955, they were already working on anti-gravity technology. They had already got the ball rolling on this. Uh, so, no, no doubt about it. Okay, next one. Amarillo Daily News, November 29th, 1955. It says, spaceships capable of accelerating in a few seconds to speeds many thousands of miles an hour and making sudden changes of course at these speeds without subje uh, subjecting their passengers to the so-called G-forces caused by gravity's pull are also envisioned. So where have we heard this before, Jordan? Yep. Talking about craft that stopped on a dime, make right angle turns. It's already here in this November 1955 article. Yeah, and 55, that's a while back. I mean, that's, that's a while that's back. Um, yeah, that's way back. That's over 50 years ago that they were already anticipating this kind of, and give it another 50 years and bring it up to today. What in the world that we really have that we've not been told? Absolutely, absolutely. You, as, as I mentioned before in the beginning, we have been lied to. I mean, if we really think that Lockheed Martin, and remember, Lockheed Skunk Works is not the only game in town here because McDonnell Douglas had their own little skunk works called the Phantom Works, and Northrop Corporation had something called the Black Widow Group. So there's these, there's a united coalition of team players here. You've got Lockheed Skunk Works, you've got Boeing, you've got McDonnell Douglas, you've got Northrop, all bidding for these contracts. Uh, these go back to the 50s. One more article quickly here, Jordan, Amarillo Daily News, November 9th, 1957. It says, quote, the jet age is already obsolete. Let me repeat that. The jet age is already obsolete. You old men of 25 or 30 years still plodding along the jet age, wake up. Jet propulsion is obsolete. The Sputnik will shortly appear as the crude it's crude as the wax wings of Icarus. So they had already been doing this in, in the mid-1950s, Jordan. Incredible, incredible. And, you know, people are seeing uh, bits and pieces of this with their own eyes. But they're, like you said, the government saying you're crazy, you know, you're not seeing anything. Well, I people are seeing it with their own eyes. And, and then when we get into UFOs and extraterrestrial presence, uh, I've seen stuff with my own eyes that is not right. of this world. So I, I know there's something really serious going on that they're not telling us. So. Right, right. Uh, Jordan, there's a, a recently published book called The Reagan Diaries. You, you might have heard of this, Jordan. On page 334, they had an interview with uh, Ronald Reagan, and this is an entry into his diary. This is June 11th, 1985. Now, this is Reagan talking here. Quote, Lunch with five top scientists. It was fascinating. Space truly is the last frontier, and some of the developments there in astronomy, etc., are like science fiction, except they are real. I learned that our shuttle capacity is such that we could orbit 300 people. Now, wait a minute. The space shuttle only carries eight astronauts. What is Ronald Reagan talking about that we have the technology in 85 to orbit 300 people, Jordan? Something yeah. else going on here we're not being told about. Yeah, yeah. and I got, a, I got a couple of stories about Ronald Reagan in relation to that that will turn your hair white. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we'll talk yep. about that later. That's fine. That's fine. And, you know, basically, Jordan, uh, it is the military industrial complex that is sucking dry the American taxpayer. They don't care about us. The only thing they care about is creating a boogeyman so that they can increase their weapons procurement. That's the only thing they care about. So when we have these terrorists go away, like Saddam Hussein and we have uh, Osama bin Laden, when these guys disappear, they always manufacture another threat so they can get more defense contracts. Now, how do we know this? Let me bring your attention to a book called The Pentagon Propaganda Machine. Uh, this was written by J.W. Fulbright, 1970. He summed it up really good here, Jordan. It says, quote, the greatest threat to American national security is the American military establishment and the no-holds-barred type of logic it uses to justify its zillion-dollar existence. That is it in a nutshell. Yeah, and as I'll add to that that there was a movie quite a few years ago 
called Last Kiss Goodbye. Huh. Okay. And in the movie, The Last Kiss Goodbye, watch it. And there's a female agent for the CIA, and she has been putting her nose where it's not, doesn't belong. And so the CIA, uh, you know, captured her, uh, kidnapped her, and took her to a warehouse. And uh, and then her superior in the CIA, he was felt to be a part of her shenanigans, so he was kidnapped. And they're both tied up, kneeling on the floor, and the head of the CIA comes in, and uh, and she says something to the effect of, uh, you, you've got to be involved in all this terrorism. And he says in the movie, last kiss goodbye, go watch it. He says, of course, we're the ones that blew up the World Trade Center. We're the ones that to- uh, set up the bombs. We're the ones that are doing all the terrorist work. Why? Simple. We need the money. And Congress yeah. is always dinning out little nickels and dimes. That's so we right. figured if we scare the world, we'll get some real money. That's what it <laughs> says in the movie. That's right. So I don't know what that tells you. Hollywood's always telling you stuff, but you know, nobody hears it. Yeah, I, I hear it in your voice, uh, Jordan. I really do, and I feel the same exact way. Every American taxpayer should have a vendetta against the defense contractors because they're just fleecing us totally. They have no concern for American taxpayers at all. Have you seen that video out there? I I found it and downloaded it because I didn't think anybody was going to believe it. Was somebody Uh uh, on the inside, with you could tell it was done with a Mickey Mouse camera probably off of a phone, (laughs) but they were were videotaping a studio. Okay. Where there's four or five guys with big lamps and big cameras, and they got a guy standing there with a, with another actor on the ground, and uh, but uh, no, the actor on the ground is a dummy. It's a big big uh, uh, you know cloth like uh, dummy, but it looks like the size of a man, and uh, and and this guy standing behind the dummy is cutting its throat. Mm-hmm. And then it shows at the same time that this, this guy is on camera with all the lights behind him, all the right lights and, and camera people around, and he's cutting this dummy's throat. The same identical picture is also on the other half of the screen showing on the news, like on, on CBS News, where <laughs> ISIS is cutting some American's throat. It's identical. Okay. Identical. Okay. So that what do, what we're seeing is that the government is is uh, you know staging a, an act and then they do their you know their their Photoshop on it and yeah. and put it into CBS News and we believe the whole thing. It's an incredible story. It's all you know, out that, there. That reminds me of your consensus reality statement, Jordan. That you know we are not seeing the real picture here. We are being totally lied to. Anything you see in the news has nothing to do with what's actually going on. No, no, absolutely not. I mean anything. Period. Anything. <laughs> so okay. that's yeah. what we are. But let's talk about the uh, the extraterrestrial presence. And uh, sure. what do you think about that? Uh, well, Jordan, I, I'm open-minded. Uh, you know, there there certainly is the possibility that, you know, we have been visited. Uh, I'm totally open-minded to that. But as you know, Jordan, personally, I believe that 95% of what people are reporting as extraterrestrial UFOs are definitely our own deep black programs. So that's well, just my no, assessment. You, uh, but I tend to agree with you. Yep, a lot of it is. A lot of it is. But even uh, some of the best scientists we have today are saying there's something else out there, too. Oh, Don't sure. throw the baby out with the bathwater because yep. the kind of technology advances we've made in the past few years uh, implies that there's a very high intelligence going on here. And I don't think it's uh, the kind of thing that humans have the potential for. I think we've been given, you know, like Phil Corso was saying and others like him, many others like him are saying that, you know, we get a lot of our technology from from somewhere else. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, when Nikolai Tesla, before he died, he was 85 years old, and he was, uh, they were giving him a, a Lifetime and Achievement Award in New York. And uh, he was speaking at that dinner that night. It was in the, it was in the, all the newspapers. Nikolai Tesla, Lifetime Achievement Award, you know, speaking in New York to all the big scientists, etc. And he said, 
himself in front of everyone that he said, when I go to sleep at night, I have a pad and pencil by my bed. And when I wake up in the morning, there's a there's an idea, concept, all outlined for me, but not in my handwriting. And I just take it to the laboratory and start working on what I'm reading and be damned if it doesn't work. So he says, so somebody's been feeding me technology for a long time in my sleep. They come in and write it down. That's what Nikolai Tesla said in front of a huge audience in New York City. I'm being led to do this stuff. So I'm just saying there's, there's more to the, to human life than what meets the eye. Sure. Jordan, you're aware of, you're aware of that deep field Hubble Space Telescope image, right? Yep, yep, sure am. Yeah. You want to you want to discuss that for a minute? Yeah, let's do. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, from, from what I understand, uh, they focused uh, the the Hubble Space Telescope on a, a dark, dark area, right? Dark portion of the galaxy, right? Thinking thinking that there would be nothing there, so they let the exposure go for quite some time. And when they got the data back, they found a whole new series of galaxies they had never seen before. Oh, so, it looks like billions and billions yeah. of them. Yeah, that's right. So even if we could go hundreds of light years, billions of light years, you know, way off from our Milky Way galaxy, we'd still be just standing in the center of the universe. If there's no telling how far this goes. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Most people have no idea in the world that our galaxy, our Milky Way, which most people can't even fathom in their mind, but our simple, our galaxy alone, it's estimated uh, if you could go at the speed of light, which is eight and a half times around the Earth in one second, speed of light, eight and a half times around the, the, the Earth in one second. If you, could, if you could go that fast, it would take you over 100,000 years mm -hmm. at that speed, just across our galaxy, 100,000 years going eight times around the Earth in one second. And that's just our galaxy. There's billions multiplied by billions of galaxies. So tell me about God. Tell me about the Lord. And all of the, uh, oh, the Lord's going to do this. And the Lord spoke to me last night. And the Lord said this. Tell me about that. You have no, I, uh, your human brain is not able to actually comprehend the, the vastness of space and the vastness of of creation, so I, I'm totally convinced we don't even begin to, to uh, you know, to begin to understand the world we live in, the earth, and where it is, and how small we really are. We are nothing more. That's why you know people, nations are referred to as cultures. The, uh, you know, the different cultures of the world. Culture is a, is like a disease. You look at it under a microscope. Hmm, yeah. You know, so. That's what we are. We're just a tiny little culture on somebody else's microscope. And so I'm totally open to the uh, to the overwhelming fact, in my view, that we have been visited. There's no, no doubt about that. Whoever they are, they're a hell of a lot smarter than we are. True, true. Uh, Jordan, one quick thing here. Uh, I want to talk about some triangles. We, we've seen the triangles all around the world for decades. I have, too. I saw oh, you have? Okay. Can you give us a brief synopsis, Jordan? What did you see? Oh, well, I, I was in the I was in the visiting a friend's home out here in Los Angeles, up in the mountains, up in the canyons, and we're sitting out by the pool one night about midnight. There's about five of us sitting out by the pool and enjoying the the, the beautiful evening, and all of a sudden we see this big triangle, black triangle, passing over us very slow. But when it passed over us, the stars that were within that triangle were blocked out. So mm -hmm. we watched it as it as it moved across the sky. About six of us out there in the backyard watching this big enormous triangle pass over us. I don't I don't believe in the flying triangles. I saw it. Yes. <laughs> Period. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, one quick thing on this, Jordan, is, and, and I want to state up front that I'm not saying that all triangles are man-made because uh, David Marler, who you may know, is the foremost researcher on black triangles, and he's documented cases to the late 1800s. This is long oh, really? before the skunk works ever got going by Kelly Johnson, so yeah. we can't say they're all man-made. But uh, he did give me a report, which never made it into his book. I created a really good uh, drawing here for anyone who wants to see a copy. But let me read this gentleman's uh, very quick sentence now. 
This is Barnsley, England, and this is uh, August 25th, 1990. He, he and his wife had just come out of a Fleetwood Mac concert, and they're driving home. It's kind of a, a, a dark evening. There's a misty cloud, and out of this black misty cloud comes this 200-foot-wide, per side, black triangle uh, on on each of the uh, corners, it had a white light. There was a light in the center, and then there was this indented section on the bottom of the craft with what looked like a cross beam and girder construction on the inside of this indented section. Now, here's what he said. Quote, the side of the craft appeared to have several illuminated windows, and at one of the windows, I saw two to three figures that appeared to be human. Certainly nothing about, nothing about the figures made me think that they were anything other than human, reinforcing my belief that the craft was a military project. So the point I'm making here, Jordan, is we've reached a point now in this technology where the military-industrial complex, including Boeing, Lockheed, Northrop, McDonnell Douglas, which is now Boeing, We've reached that point now, Jordan, where it's absolutely seamless and you can't tell who's who anymore. Oh, I know that. No doubt about that. But there really is, like that guy said in the introduction, there's something going on out there. Hollywood knows it and, and highly intelligent people around the world know it. And uh, so, you know, like, like Benjamin Disraeli said, there's too much evidence to hide something that's so obvious you might as well go on and admit it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that there's too much smoke not to make a fire, not to mean a fire. Sure. And uh, we are, as humans, all of us collectively together, just the regular humans on the earth, we are at the mercy of some very powerful, dark forces on the earth, mm -hmm. both human mm -hmm. and I believe other you know, other other than human also. So, Jordan, nice you want to... Do you want to discuss your assessment of what uh, George Lucas's Star Wars really is about and about the ownership, the ownership of who might be coming back for who and who has the right, the obligation and the authority over the human race? No, but I, I've got my own thoughts about that, but I'm, I'm curious to hear yeah. you. That's fine. Tell me That's what fine. you think. Yeah. Well, um, I've got another case here. This is from Linda Zimmerman. I want to give her credit. Now, th you know, this could be, this might not be one of ours. Now, she interviewed multiple people for her book that talks about the Hudson Valley boomerang sightings. She interviews one gentleman who in 1953, this is uh, Socrates, New York, he saw a cigar-shaped craft that was between 300 to 350 feet across, 50 feet in diameter, and then it had these concentric rings of r red and green lights going around them in circles. This is back in 53. And then a few minutes later, what he believed to be three F-84 Sabre jets tried to intercept this thing, and they could not get anywhere near it. So, you know, I don't know if this is a military project, because why would we be launching our own jets against one of our own craft? So this could have been something else, Jordan. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. And why would... Why would Steven Spielberg, who is a lot of things, but stupid isn't one of them, right. why would he be pro pro producing movies, uh, extraordinary, uh, you know, brilliant movies about E.T. And, and Close Encounters? But one other thing, and I've said this other, uh, on other shows, I'll say it again, that can you imagine how much it would cost you if you were going to finance Steven Spielberg to do a regular movie like India, like uh, Indiana Jones or, or one of his big movies, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jones? Can you imagine how much it would cost you out of your pocket to finance Steven Spielberg for a major movie? Well, he did a 19-hour television series on the UFO and the military, uh, the military extraterrestrial connection around the world and especially in America it was called Taken. 19 right. hours by, by Steven Spielberg. Somebody put up a lot of money for, uh, for a television series of 19 hours talking about the American military establishment and the extraterrestrial connection. Spielberg is not stupid. He's put up uh, 19 hours into one project alone on that subject. Mm -hmm. So that tells me, and I got some more I could tell you about <laughs> when we get on those subjects. No, this is you know, very real, legitimate stuff. 
The other in interesting thing is too, Jordan, uh, according to Jacques Vallée, 51% of UFO cases are in point of fact USO cases, unidentified yeah. submerged objects. And this is a, this is kind of a, uh, a genre of ufology that's never even talked about. I mean, You're right. we're talking about right. 51% are USO cases and it's completely forgotten about. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. And I got I got some thoughts about that too. But go on. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, I want to talk about the USS FDR case. This is a really good case. Uh, you may have heard about this, Jordan. This is late 1958. The U.S. aircraft carrier Franklin Delano Roosevelt. This is CBA 42. Uh, at least 20 naval officers on the deck of this aircraft carrier saw a large cigar-shaped craft. Uh, it was around 9 p.m. And it came down closer and closer, hovered over the flight deck of the aircraft carrier. Uh, it got so close that the naval officers could feel the heat radiating off this craft onto their heads. And one gentleman, who we have him on uh, on record here, he said that one of the, what he termed being, was looking outside one of these porthole windows of this craft, waving back to the people on the aircraft carrier. And then this thing took off at a high rate of speed. So... You know, who was this, right? What, was this one of ours, uh, 1958? I don't know. Per perhaps. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. But yeah, you know, it, it goes on. There's more cases like that as well. Oh, of course. Of course. And astronauts and all kinds. I had a book. I can't remember the name of the book. It was written by a, by a NASA uh, engineer about UFOs, etc. But he quoted uh, quotes from astronauts to the ground uh, bases and, and pilots and, uh, you know, fighter pilots also to the ground, things that they were seeing. And he's quoting them. And I'm telling you, those quotes were sensational. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got, you've got top of the line pilots and, and astronauts and they're saying, I don't know what the hell this thing is, but it sure is big and it's following us. So, you know, when you start hearing things like that, you better go back and look at what's going on here. Something, you know, we, we're in bigger trouble than we thought we were. See, that brings to mind, Jordan, what actually happened to Apollo 11 on July 20th, 1969. Why did Neil Armstrong not clue us in? Why did he remain a recluse? Why didn't he give us some videotape recorded statement, but he remained silent basically all the way through his life? I wonder, Jordan, what really went on in Apollo 11? Yeah. What is Buzz Aldrin not telling us, Jordan? Yeah, yeah I know, I know, and... And I hate to even think about that because I don't like putting them because <clears throat> they're good guys, and I hate putting I them into a very difficult position by bringing that up because I know it's very they're between a rock and a hard place. They can't tell you what they know, and I That's know because right. I've talked to I've talked to uh, astronauts, and I I was on a show for two hours with with our Irwin. Um, up in the San, what is it, San Francisco area, mm -hmm. where he just passed away. And uh, I talked with him for a couple of hours on the radio, and then we talked off the air. So I know that these guys are good guys. They're, they're good American people who have had experiences, but because of military, they can't say, you know, they, they are, they're only allowed to say so much. But you're right. There's a lot of stuff going on that they could tell us, but they can't. So I don't know where to go with it. Yeah, I know. They're they're not allowed to, to discuss it. Uh, maybe they think we can't handle it. I don't know. What do you think, Jordan? Let's just throw out a theoretical. Can the American public and the world, are they at a point? Have we reached the point now with cell phones and androids and Internet? Have we finally reached singularity where we can handle it? What do you think, Jordan? I think so because all of television, even in Europe, I've been over there many times and watched TV, uh, or especially in the, in the progressive countries and, uh, like America and, and England and Canada, there's all kinds of, uh, public shows, uh, you know, History Channel and Discovery and all kinds of shows about extraterrestrials and secret societies, the Illuminati and, uh, and, uh, you know, my God, it's all over the web with aliens and UFOs. So I'm sure everybody in the world has heard about all of this, uh, and I, I still believe that there's a lot of people out there who are just plain down home ignorant, 
who haven't got the faintest idea in the world what's going on. But those people will always be there, like Jesus said, the poor you have with you always. I say the, the dimwit you will always have with you. But getting serious, there's a lot of people on the earth now who are aware that we've been lied to and that there's something coming down. But I would add to that, I think our future is in very great peril. I think the whole human race is in serious trouble. There's something happening around us technologically and in and, and, and secret societies and secret that we don't know about, and they are planning some kind of a future for the human race. And it's frightening because Hollywood gives you movies all the time telling you, you know, the planet of the apes and, uh, you know, and, and my God, go back and look at some of the movies like uh, uh, Body Snatchers and the UFOs and Aliens. So Hollywood's been trying to tell us for a long time, we're not here alone. There's all kinds of dark, deep secrets being planned for us behind the scenes. And we're just the humans on the earth like cattle. That's why the Jews call us Goy, because we're just like cattle. We don't know. We're just out there grazing and taking care of our young. But the lions, they're crawling in the grass. There's not many of them, only six, but, boy, they're deadly. And the whole herd of water buffalo, a thousand head, uh, cannot deal with the six lions. They show up and we run. So I know that there's, uh, you know, there are lions out there who are laying for us, who are laying their plans against us. It's scary. The, our, our future is frightening to me. And I know you, you probably have been looking at the same kind of stuff. So I don't know sure, where we sure. go from here. But you know what I'm thinking? What we're up against, though, Jordan, the, the guys that we're up against, they're, they're good. They're very good. You know, their mandate is to, is to lie, deny, and deceive. I'm talking about CIA directors. Yeah, of course. You, you keep on looking at this, and all roads lead to the CIA, to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, to the proprietary defense contractors. And, you know, we'll, we'll preface this with a big if. If these crash retrievals are real, and a lot of evidence points that they are, and all roads go back to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, <laughs> um, if the crash retrievals are real, and they have reverse engineered the technology, and they've exploited the technology for energy and propulsion gains that could make the utilities obsolete, you know, coal of fire course. plants, if, yeah. if, if they've got the technology to make that obsolete, then you know that's the reason for the cover-up because we're talking about a multi-trillion dollar industry. And they'll well, never let course. that go, Jordan. They'll never let it go. Well, the fact is that they can't let it go, even if they wanted to, because those industries hire hitmen. We yeah. know that the big corporations do business with the mafia, Lucosa Nostra. We know that they do business with the uh, Mexican gangs, the uh, Russian uh, mafia. Big corporations do big business with big criminal syndicates. And so if you happen to be a physicist or a scientist that knows what's going on and you want to help the people understand, yeah, well, you, you'll wake up dead tomorrow. You'll, your wheel will come off your car with your family in it, and they'll find you dead with your family off, the, off of a mountainside. So even if they wanted to, uh, big, big company, big corporation can't do anything. You'll be killed if you do. That's the way it works. So in your assessment, Jordan, do you think they're going to just ride this out for as long as possible? Will we ever get to the point where the common man will finally see the vision that Tesla had thought of so many years ago? Will we finally get there, Jordan? I don't think so. I, have no, I don't think so at all. Okay. And the reason why is because this system that we live under is too well-connected, too well-financed, too old. It's been around for hundreds of years. Right. When America was being founded, it already the founding fathers already knew. You know, like Benjamin Franklin says, we're trying to give you a republic if you can keep it. Right. And so, uh, and so they already knew. It's, you know, our days are numbered as a human race. Mm -hmm. The technology is too far advanced. There's too many powerful criminal minds at work. And nothing in the past 10,000 years has been developed by anybody 
that could help the human race has always gone to military. It's always gone to the king to use against his enemies, never to help the people. So That's right. people who have, have got control over this, they'll kill you. Yeah. And, and Jordan, you know something you're not supposed to know? You're a dead man walking. Jordan, no, nobody's going to help us, are they, Jordan? They're, Nobody, they're going to leave no us. One. No one. No one. No. And incidentally, while we were talking about that, Jesus will not be coming back because it's very <laughs> difficult for somebody to come back to make a big comeback when they never were here to start with. Right, right. And so, here's the other thing, Jordan. As you know, the, the clock is ticking, Jordan. The clock is ticking because Albert Pike, in his reference works, talked about there being three world wars. Now, we've already seen the first two. Jordan, when are they going to trigger that third one that Albert Pike promised would come? Yeah, well, first of all, there's all kinds of naysayers out there, and and uh, people say, oh, it's a bunch of bull, and uh, he never said that and all that. It doesn't matter whether he said it or not, whether it's a real letter or not. I've heard all the stories about it and against it. But the bottom line is it doesn't matter who wrote the letter. It doesn't matter if it's a fraud or not. Whoever wrote that letter knew what was going on. Just read it, and you tell me if that's not what's happening today, period. Right. Right. Period. So it may be fraud. It may be uh, it may be a bunch of bull. Yeah, well, read it. Just read it and tell me if that's not what's happening today. And, yeah, the three world wars were and, and – uh, were prophesied, and they told, and and he even talked about how it was going to happen, and how well, you know, all the, all the details of it. So I'm just saying, yeah, go read it, read the letter that Pike wrote to Mazzini, and you tell me if that's not happening in your front of you, right in front of you, in your face. So I don't know what to say about it. I don't know. I wasn't there, but it sure looks it looks legitimate to me. Jordan, are we going to make it to the November elections without a false flag attack? Uh, that's, that's, that is uh, a good question. Uh, you know, I, I, one thing Dick Gregory said a long time ago, computers will only spit out to you what you have put into them. Mm -hmm. So you have to type in something into a computer and then when you press a button, it will, it will print it out for you. And so computers will only spit out what you put in. And therefore, you know, I, well, hell, you could put in, uh, you know, that so and so won the election by 40 billion votes, and type that into the computer, and then say print, <laughs> and uh, or or erase, delete, and so uh, I, I, you know, I don't buy any of this. The elections, all of it's a bunch of bull. It's all computerized. It's all entertainment. It's all Hollywood. You got all the Hollywood stars that playing. You know, the big stars are playing uh, movies glorifying the Communist Party, glorifying the Nazi Party, glorifying uh, fascism. Hollywood is filled with filth and dirt and glorifying communism. And it's an incredible story about how the technology today of computers is just uh, just screwing over the whole human race. And we just go along with it. We haven't got the faintest idea what's going on, but Hollywood does. I don't think we're going to be able to extricate ourselves out of this out of this monstrosity. So I don't hold out too much hope for the human race because, you know, the human race has no power because knowledge is power. They haven't got the faintest idea what's going on. So how are you going to fight something you don't even know exists? That's true. Oh, That's true. incredible. <laughs> Okay, uh, one quick thing just to kind of get back on subject here. Um, one thing I want to discuss, and you may be aware of this, Jordan, is uh, the Hudson Valley boomerangs between 1982 and 1989, where 25,000 eyewitnesses saw a gigantic V or boomerang-shaped craft hovering over lakes, uh, reservoirs, uh, Taconic Freeway. This is about 40 miles north of downtown New York City. This this is really the the biggest group of sightings in ufology. Period. It it, it just it it's it went on for like 10 years and almost now it's almost completely forgotten. But let me give you the quote from one of the primary eyewitnesses who actually was standing directly below one of these boomerang shaped crap. Now here's what he said. Um, and there's a motif that you can see that goes throughout all these sightings. And I'm talking about the Hudson Valley boomerang and also the Belgium Triangle sightings of 89 and 90, even the Phoenix Lights crack. They all reported 
what they said were tubes, pipes, and cylinders on the bottom of these vehicles. Now, here is Dennis Sand, quote, this is Phil Philadelphia Inquirer, September 28, 1984. As it hovered, I could make out dark, smoky, colored, metallic beams underneath, huge, huge beams. This is Dennis Sand. Now, another eyewitness this is more, uh, Maureen O'Driscoll. This is what she had to say. Quote, I could see the underbelly part. It's solid. It had metal type work like cross beams and tubular things hanging down here and there. I was so close, I could have thrown a ball and hit it. The other thing, Jordan, is on most of these sightings, they're almost always silent or they have a very faint electrical hum. So the, the question I'm raising is, would an advanced extraterrestrial race that could be perhaps millions of years in, in advance of ours be mm -hmm. flying around in our atmosphere with craft that have tubes, pipes, and cylinders on the bottom, exactly what you would see if you turn your refrigerator around. You see these condensation pipes? That's what they're seeing, Jordan. So uh, it's my assessment that a large majority of these are, are man-made craft, and they're using these craft to hide their own deep black programs. They want people to think that these are extraterrestrial UFOs when in point of fact they're our own programs, Jordan. All right. Could it also be that uh, that uh, these programs and these uh, vehicles, which are obviously made here, could be also being made and operated in conjunction with extraterrestrials who are here with us, helping us to divide design these enormous monstrosities, is it possible that, that, that the military industrial complex is actually working hand in hand with extraterrestrials who are helping us with this kind of technology that's popped in overnight hmm. you know, from, from a horse and carriage to flying triangles within a hundred years. It's incredible. Uh, the, the speed in which we've been able to do this, and I think maybe our industrial complex has an extraterrestrial presence in it. That's what I think. Uh, well, it, it, you know what, Jordan? I can't rule it out 100%. I can't rule it out 100%, although that would be difficult to pin down because you know you're never going to find anything like that in the university library. You have to be <laughs> within... Yeah. The contractors, you've got to be a Burbank skunk workers under Kelly Johnson or Ben Rich or someone yep. who works at Boeing, you know, someone who are yep. that far you're going to find. You won't find that in your library. That you oh, heavens no. no. And if you do find it, you're a dead man walking. You're, you're a dead man. That's right. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Now, that also, you know, we, we can go into uh, Belgium Triangle 8990 where the same tubes, pipes, and cylinders were, were seen there as well. There are reports, uh, believe it or not, of the Phoenix Lights incident where they saw tubes, pipes, and cylinders there. Uh, the same type under structure, which one gentleman who was a police officer, this is uh, January 5, 2000, the Southern Illinois Triangle sightings, um, he said they, quote, looked like stacked Legos. So that we always hear this very unusual bottom understructure of these black craft flying over silently, and they can also take off like a spark on a grinding wheel and make no sonic boom, Jordan. So they've got that technology down too. Yeah, yeah. What you about uh, good, what, are you, what are your thoughts about uh, Area 51? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, well, a Area 51 was essentially put together for you to. Five plane operations in 1955. It led to the A-12, the SR-71, the F-117A, and a whole host of other classified programs. Uh, Aviation Week Space Technology stated, quote, eight years of the Reagan administration were very good to the black world. So we know, Jordan, for a fact, we know, you can bank on it. There are dozens of black aircraft programs that we have no clue about. Absolutely. How do we know that? Because if you look at the current state of X-planes, we have the X-1, which was uh, Ch Chuck Yeager, 1947, when he broke the sound barrier, going up to the X-47, unmanned aircraft, uh, additional X-planes going up to the X-50, something like that. Yeah. I've been told, Jordan, that there are twice as many X-planes as is being revealed, Jordan. Something like a hundred X planes are what's really going on. <laughs> yeah, that's that's crazy. That's really incredible. And 
All of this is taking us where? Where is the human race heading? And who's really in charge of the human family? Who's really in charge of all of this? Because the people aren't. People have no idea in the world what's going on, you know. And that's why I'm wondering about why uh, Spielberg would redo the uh, War of the Worlds, and, sure. uh, and which he was saying, and it's even in the subheading of, of the movie, War of the Worlds. The subheading was they're not coming here, they're already here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think that there is something to that. I just I totally believe that there is an extraterrestrial connection to what's going on on the earth today. I don't think it's all humans. I know that we have demonic humans here, Mm -hmm. people who are murderous, demonic, depraved. uh, But uh, I I still believe that there's a higher intelligence that the word I use is to overshadow the human race. It overshadows everything. Some kind of a higher intelligence that's watching all things And we're developing according to its uh, agenda and its plan. We don't know where we've come from, what we're doing, or where we're going, but somebody does. I want to get your assessment, Jordan. Now, we've all heard the the, the statement that, uh, you know, one year in the white world, how many years go by in the black world? So, like, if you go out to your local air show, Jordan, and you see an F-117 or you see a B-2 or even just in, in general uh, automotive industry or in the medical industry, how far Jordan ahead do you think they really are, Jordan? Yeah, I know, I know. What I, what year are they living in, Jordan? Yeah, I know. Uh, I I've thought about that often. What what kind of technology is is on this planet that we humans have never been told? Mm-hmm. Uh, I I I I get the point that you yeah. know, the the best the best computer stuff on the market today that comes out tomorrow morning brand new top of the line computer stuff obviously obviously is being thrown away by the government's junk they don't need it That's so right. sell it to sell it to the people as the top of the line newest thing and uh, we'll make our money back that mm-hmm. it costs us to develop it so even the best we've got today brand new is old junk that the government had a long time ago so. That's right. You know, Jordan, if you, you look at Hollywood movies like The Fifth Element and you, yeah. you see these flying taxi cars, right, and, and this, this whole freeway in the air where there's these flying cars, I mean, we're, we're talking 100, 200, 300 years ahead of us. Um, uh, could yeah, they really right. be living in that world? Is Hollywood nothing more than a belated designer leap for what's really going on behind the scenes, Jordan? Well, what, a, what did Frank Zappa say? Frank Zappa made a comment. He said, Hollywood is merely the, uh, the uh, entertainment division of the, era of the, uh, of the uh, industrial complex. It's the entertainment division of the military <laughs> industrial complex. It's where we make our movies and cartoons and, and entertain the people and keep them pacified and stupid. Uh, 